and then getting called out for having I don't know, maybe half an inch of cleavage showing. I think the, the biggest question that I have around professionalism and bodies is like to what extent are we gonna allow ourselves and our coworkers and our peers to get in trouble for, for the body that they're in. Sitting here might be an interesting decision because of where the sun is, but we will see. Regardless, you know, shadows move on my face. That'll make things more visually interesting for you all. So I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Hi everyone, it's been a minute. I'm going to try my best to upload on Fridays around 1 p.m. CST, determining, or not determining, but based on my schedule and everything that I have going on. I'm starting a PhD program next week. We have orientation next week but I'm studying communication and so a lot of what I learn is probably going to drift into these video essays and I'm very excited about it. But because of this program, I have been scrutinizing my wardrobe. I'm going to be teaching an undergraduate course, two sections of the same course for the first time. I've never been the sole professor of a course and I'm excited, I love teaching, but it's also made me question a lot about how I've been presenting myself to the world as of late. I'm only 26. And that also makes things a little bit hard because I'm still at the age that I don't think ever really goes away, but is assumed to go away, where I want to be stylish and taken seriously, but also comfortable. And I think that men, to a certain extent, have this problem too, and non-binary folks as well, but I think that women have additional expectations that are very unclear, especially if they're curvy. So I'm usually between anywhere between the sizes of 12 and 16, depending on the brand, the store, the time of month, um, the season. And COVID has kind of done a number on my step count. And so some of that has affected my ability to fit into the clothes that I did pre-pandemic. Bodies fluctuate. I'm kind of happy that I'm learning that lesson sooner rather than later. A lot of the changes that have been happening in my body are actually reminding me of instances of insecurity and not necessarily obsessiveness, but concern around the clothing that I put on my body because I have always been in a curvier body for as long as I can remember and a bigger body for as long as I can remember. And it affects what I determine to be professional. And while gearing up for this PhD program, I started thinking to myself, well, what does being professional even mean? What does that look like? I thought back to what a lot of my professors would wear and I don't think I ever noticed what the male professors wore. And then the only time I actually recall remembering what my lady professors wore were when they wore something particularly cute. So I don't think that anyone else is gonna scrutinize this as much as I will, but I do think that to a certain extent, when you have boobs or a butt, the same rules for professionalism don't apply or apply very differently. And we have to jump through certain hoops to, to get to that label that everyone is, a, is taught to aspire to, to look professional in a, in a work environment. And I think it's worth talking about. I'm one of those women who hit puberty pretty early on. I think I was 12, maybe even 11 when I got my period and the boobs came shortly after. I remember getting my tonsils out and the nurse made a big deal about the fact that she didn't wanna put my little bra on me while I was unconscious, which I guess is good and the smart thing, but it was just awkward to make a big deal about the fact that I was already wearing a bra in front of my family when they were picking me up from getting my tonsils removed. So like I've been pretty self-conscious of my body for as long as I can remember, or at least conscious of it, if not always self-conscious. And that continued into high school. I went to an all girls Catholic school, but I still remember on uniform free Fridays that were usually some sort of fundraiser for something, I think, but I remember constantly being uniform checked and often having peers, so other young women, tell me that my shirt's too low cut, this is too tight. It wasn't just coming from teachers. And that made me even more self-conscious about my body. There were women who had bigger breasts than mine who were pointing out the fact that if they could wear things that were up to here and be comfortable, then I should do the same. And I think that body policing is something that women get taught really early on, not just of ourselves, but of noticing other people's bodies as well and 
sometimes actually vocalizing that policing is encouraged in a way that I'm, I'm thinking is lesser now. I don't notice it as much with Gen Z, but I'm also not Gen Z. But I remember being very aware of what I was wearing on non-uniform days and also very aware of the fact that the blouse and skirt that we were given the skirt was, it fit me fine, but the blouses, the ones that were a size bigger than what would naturally be designed for my body type, like m not just my body type, but all of our body types. It was a basic blouse and it was presumed that you weren't going to be a, a curvy young woman. Like they were designed for people who are also beautiful. And I think that was really hard for me, was always having to deal with buttons and safety pinning here. And you'll notice, you'll see in a couple of the outfits that I have that I'm gonna show throughout this that I've purchased or planned for my more professional wardrobe that I still struggle with getting button-ups that fit me. And if I size up so that the chest actually closes, I look like I'm wearing a paper bag or like I'm a kindergarten teacher. And I do think that there should be a way to feel both you know, pretty, confident, all of those things, and also wear clothes that fit you. It shouldn't be either or. And I, it's something where I think a lot of men can get really nice fitting suits Granted, if you're someone that's dealt with this, if you're if you're someone who doesn't wear the more feminine things and you struggle with this, please let me know in the comments because I'm only coming at this from my perspective, but I just think that that's really important and it's something that we overlook a lot is literal design of clothing items in addition to sizing. I can recall being told my shirt was too low cut for choir practice by one of my peers in high school. She told me that if her double D breasts could be covered by her high necked top, I had no reason to be showing any cleavage. We were 16 and it was a hot day in Memphis, Tennessee. I wasn't about to concern myself with the gaze of others. I often think that teenagers are considered sexy earlier than they need to be or are sexualized way too soon. But I also think that we imagine that a lot of their decisions are to be sexy. And sometimes that's true. I remember being interested in, in people and, and wanting to be attractive when I was that young, but that decision and the, the, the most decisions that I made in terms of clothing were for comfort over other people's gazes. And I think having a peer sexualize me in that way at 16, it was too early and it was uncomfortable and I didn't have a real response because, and I felt very slut shamed and very strange about just wanting to be comfortable and having dressed for comfort and then getting called out for having, I don't know, maybe half an inch of cleavage showing. And even if I had had more, it was a hot day. <laughs> I should be able to wear whatever I want without fear of comment. When I ended up eventually going to public school, I wore black skinny jeans on, and, and that wasn't part of the uniform, but the other option was leggings, which was also not part of the uniform. And I wasn't about to go buy a pair of black slacks for high school. So, I mean, that's a little bit of individualism or my small rebellious spirit, just not wanting to have to invest in like nice black pants when I'm 18 and don't care about those things. But the way that the teacher checked if there were jeans was by like touching my leg and that was wildly uncomfortable. Not like in a sexual way, but just anyone touching anybody. It's not fun. While adults never really made me feel too uncomfortable, the friend that pointed out the cleavage situation made me feel as if my breast to body proportions weren't as appropriate as hers were. And as I got older, I started to notice that it seemed like someone would comment on my clothing regardless of how it was cut. I recall going to school around Christmas, getting close to Christmas time in the winter, and I was wearing just a, a black turtleneck sweater that in my eyes was very conservative, but apparently it was too tight and everyone felt the need to point it out. As a young woman on the volleyball team, I was often very aware of the fact that I was one of the bigger ones. In fact, one of the older girls once called sh herself and me the, the fat ones on the team, which really bothered me at the time. I don't think some, a comment like that would affect me as much now, but just this, this capability that we seem to have of pointing out each other's bodies and the way that that got taught to us is very uncomfortable. It was also really confusing because despite having that label thrust on me throughout high school and feeling very 
aware of my size in comparison to everyone else. I didn't really have a hard time getting boys to want to go to dances with me or having that kind of attention when I wanted it. And so that was really confusing. I felt very objectified a lot of the time and obviously wouldn't give anyone a second date or anything like that if I felt that way about them or if they made me feel that way in my body. But I just remember thinking that a lot of the negative comments I had around my body from my peers might have come from a place of jealousy, but also not knowing if that was the case. I also was very involved in this movement that I think was called Be That Girl or something. I'll have to look into it, but the idea was that we were going to be empowering other women and so I, I would take these comments from my peers and try to figure out where they were coming from and it, I remember it just felt impossible to fully figure it out and I still struggle with knowing exactly what to say in the moment when someone makes me uncomfortable. I usually find a way to joke about something else, change the subject, and that's something that I'm still working on. I also remember thinking that when I got older, dressing appropriately for my body was going to be easier. I thought that I would figure it out. That didn't happen. So I'm trying to put together a wardrobe that makes me feel both confident and professional without breaking the bank. I ventured to thread up. I am not sponsored or anything, but I do have an affiliate link that I'll put down below. I do really like them. They're a little bit addictive, so I would be careful, but I'll show some outfits as we continue to talk about this. But this idea of professionalism is just very interesting because when I had my first couple of real positions out of undergrad, I would come in, again, a blouse and maybe a really nice skirt. And the first day of an internship that I had, I was told that that was overdressing. And so the next day I showed up in black, again, black skinny jeans and I think a similar blouse, if not the same blouse. And that day I was told that that was inappropriate. And you would think it was just because it was denim, but I had a smaller peer, a smaller coworker wear the same brand of jeans that day. I remember because we joked about twinning and I asked her the next day if she had had similar comments and she hadn't and I realized immediately upon coming home and having my partner, at the time boyfriend and now husband, compliment my butt in the pants, that what likely happened was the literal shape of my body made me a target for negative comments about my lack of professionalism when a smaller woman with less of a, <laughs> I guess, present bottom in the same way didn't get the same comments and was likely not looked at in the same way. I think the, the biggest question that I have around professionalism and bodies is like to what extent are we gonna allow ourselves and our coworkers and our peers to get in trouble for, for the body that they're in? I think, I mean, I, I, I'll link video essays that have been done by black women about how those standards are completely different for them Usually when people make comments about things like earring sizes or nail polish colors, they're not thinking about white women and it doesn't affect us as much. So I understand that I am still in a privileged position in this conversation, but I also think it's really important to also note that it's like things like nail polish, earrings, like the list for women is so much longer in any sort of professional conversation. and. Men are presumed to understand what being professional looks like, you know, slacks and a button down, which I understand is boring, but I also think that men's bodies are just not scrutinized in the same way. Priya Alika Elias has a really great article that I'll link as well, specifically about how her feminine black body got her in trouble a couple of times too. And I think when people talk about professionalism, especially when you're growing up in high school, the rules seem simple. A skirt that hits your knees, a blouse that doesn't come too far below your collarbone, yada yada, all of those things, but none of these conversations take plus size curvy bodies into account. Short bodies, really tall bodies, they're, they're just, these rules don't make any sense and I think that we need to move past thinking of bodies and clothes when it comes to professionalism and only thinking about the way that people are engaging with other people interpersonally. I understand that it would be really distracting if I showed up to work in lingerie, but I'm not doing that. And it's still comment, like, and there are still comments around the way 
a pair of jeans fit on my butt. Especially since a lot of us are returning to work or starting new work after months, a year in some cases, wearing sweatpants on the bottom and then just something kind of nice maybe with a blazer or a cardigan on top. We all have to readjust again to this idea of dressing the right way. I keep doing air quotes. I feel like I can have a counter for every time I do air quotes in this because it just makes me so angry. When you're a woman of color, you learn quickly that your body is hyper visible because it is probably the only one of its kind in the courtroom. You are constantly among men, white men, who notice how different you look from the usual faces they see. And because you're hyper visible, you are subject to the harshest, most unforgiving scrutiny. Does that girl belong here? What is she doing here? They wonder. And when they wonder, they seize upon the easiest thing to criticize, the thing that anybody would notice, the way you're dressed. It's almost as if bodies that have any sort of shape to them are unwelcome. I often feel cornered trying to just put on a nicer outfit for the day. I do think that urge to buy something that's bigger to avoid showing off the shape of my body comes frequently but then I always regret it when I do because I don't feel confident in those clothes. And I, I honestly think sometimes when I wear something that's too big, it lo I look like a slob. I look like someone who doesn't know how to dress myself. So it often feels like there's no way to win. She also writes, this was the fear that every professional woman wrestled with, the fear of not being taken seriously because of how we were dressed. It was a problem that was compounded for women of color, for plus size women, for any woman who did not fit the cis, thin, white body ideal. I don't wanna pretend like the professionalism hurdles stop at clothes, they absolutely do not. There are issues of negotiation that women don't know how to do, people of color often don't know how to do as well as cis white men, and there are expectations around eye contact and politeness that don't necessarily get taught in the same way in all communities and so when they're when everyone is held to the same standards in professional environments things can get really tricky but individuals who are perceived as acceptably attractive on average earn a higher income than people who don't or aren't and those who are promoting the people who they perceive as attractive aren't thinking of black bodies bodies of color disabled bodies or bigger bodies as those attractive ones. And I hate that this is, it needs to be part of the conversation. I hate that this idea of literally someone could just not be attracted to you and therefore not want to promote you or not find you attractive even if they're not attracted to your gender, say, but that, but they think that you need to be an attractive individual in order to get a promotion. It's really frustrating and it's scary, honestly, and it's something that I think has led a lot of people to be even more insecure about the way that they present to the world and also the ways that they dress and the kind of financial ability that they have to wear things that will accentuate the right parts of them, cover the right parts of them, look expensive enough and it's all, it's all a cycle. I feel like this is something that isn't hard to grasp but is worth mentioning again. It's if if I can't get the high paying job that allows me to purchase the nice clothes that will allow me to continue to stay in that nice job, I think there's something broken there. Now most of my students are going to be between 18 and 22. I'm not under the impression that they are gonna look at me for more than five minutes the entire time that we are in a classroom together. And it's going to just be when I am giving them information, maybe lecturing, if they're paying attention. Their opinions are not something that I am wholly worried about. I want them to take me seriously as someone who is invested in their ability to learn to collaborate and get engaged and excited about the topics that we will be discussing. And so I don't want my outfits to be a distraction, but I also don't want whatever I choose to wear to be a distraction to me. Something that I worry about often too is when I think back to my all of my professors, most were men and the women were small. So I don't know if I would have noticed a different way of dressing if I had had an example of a average sized plus sized woman teaching my lessons. And it also makes me wonder how much of that attractiveness bias my university held in making their hiring decisions. I think that one way to circumvent this issue is by ordering these secondhand pieces because they're a little bit less expensive. They fit me better than 
a lot of the clothes that I had prior to the pandemic, but this still doesn't seem like the solution. I think we need to start talking about professionalism, especially in women's professionalism in a different way. I don't think we all need the $200 dresses and blazers in order to fit in. I don't think that we need to all feel like we need to have a subscription to rent the runway in order to be taken seriously. And I'm not under the impression that any of these clothes are going to save me from comments about my figure from either superiors, peers, or even my students. But I think thinking about this and reminding myself that this is all part of a system that I did not opt into, but happen to exist within now, will hopefully keep me a little bit clear-headed. And I'm hoping that if anyone finds this, video essay and I don't know, is interested in, in having a conversation about women's style in terms of professionalism that we can all open up conversation with one another in the comments because I think that there, this is something that I want to learn a lot more about the history of it, where it comes from, where it's going, especially post pandemic. Like I feel like everyone would just be in a better mood if they could wear leggings to work. But I also understand the, the desire to avoid any sort of glances or stares or anything at the same time. I've also been wrapping my head around the fact that there are people who can just put clothes on in the morning without taking it into consideration at all what other people will think about them because they've never had any sort of comment like that made about them. And I think that that's amazing and incredible and kind of unbelievable, but I, I, I want us all to get to a point where that becomes more of the norm, not just for straight size cis white bodies, but for everybody. And I don't wanna dismiss the other insecurities. Everyone can have insecurities around their body, around the way that they dress, around their income, around everything. But I think this kind of specific professionalism conversation and the way that women's bodies are policed in workspaces specifically stem from racism, sexism, ableism, fat phobia, all of these terrible things. And so it's worth fighting this beast as a separate entity and really trying to train people, train people to be accepting of and willing to, I mean, honestly kind of ignore the way that people are dressing in the workplace because it, it shouldn't matter. It's all systems, all broken systems. And I think the longer we perpetuate the, these ideas around professionalism and what makes a professional woman versus someone who doesn't know what she's doing, the, the longer we're going to lose out on some really great information and ideas from people who are completely worth hiring, but maybe don't have access to the standards that we've set or who don't necessarily know what all it is that they don't even have access to. And honestly, I'm probably gonna be thinking about all of this stuff until I can afford to hire a tailor. So. <laughs> I wrote this as an article first that I published on Medium and I received a comment that I think was well-meaning and really lovely, but it was basically a woman saying, you know, she was short and curvy and here is a clothing brand that was always really accessible to her. Well, it wasn't, it's not a very inexpensive clothing brand, so it's already not very accessible to everyone. But I also think she might have missed the point of the article and the point of this video essay, which is that shouldn't be part of the problem. If I'm genuinely more confident and comfortable in like a high necked tank top, maybe with a pair of nice pants, if I'm feeling like it, rather than a button-up blouse that risks exposing me all of the time, then that should be acceptable. If I wanna wear a pair of jeans because they're comfortable and I know that I will be able to focus on my work, I feel like I should get to do that. Is that so wrong? Is it so wrong? Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. If you have any stories about breaking a dress code or having a coworker complain about what you're wearing, please share them with me. If I have made an assumption or a statement that you disagree with, feel free to put that in the comments as well. I understand that I'm only coming at this from my perspective and I'm sharing my experience. So I would love to learn more about yours below. If you're someone who's interested in writing the LGBTQ community style, culture, technology, any of those things, I'm kind of a wild card but please feel free to like and subscribe and I will see you all next time. Thank you, bye.